from Greek gods to failed human experiments. The concept of the ideal male form has transformed significantly throughout history. Initially a lean muscular physique, the passage of time has seen an ominous alteration that has left what many believe to be unsavoury and disturbing changes. But the only way to truly trace the man's pursuit of perfection is to examine the history which has moulded it. In ancient Greece there was a weightlifter named Biban. A single short inscription from Olympia Records is all that is known of this weightlifter. This inscription bearing his name was found on a block of granite with two deep notches carved out of it forming a handle so that the stone could be used as a free weight. Weighing approximately 143.5 kilograms or 316 pounds, the stone's carved inscription reads, Biban, son of Fola, has lifted me over his head with one hand. This feat of strength is hugely impressive and it would almost certainly have required a muscular frame to perform this. According to historical texts, Greeks would sculpt their body using stone dumbbells which were not that heavy, weighing 2 to 9 kilograms for regular training. As evidenced by Greek statues, their society was fascinated by the muscular male form, effectively signalling the start of bodybuilding as a tradition. The history of Indian bodybuilding dates back to 1100 AD, and by 1500 bodybuilding had become a national passion. Stones and sacks of sand were used for weightlifting, as well as stone dumbbell weights known as nals. However, those that were lifting aimed to develop and enhance their health and stamina in order to help overcome the challenges of daily life as opposed to improving aesthetics. Then came Eugen Sandow, a German bodybuilder and showman from Prussia. Born in April 1867, as a youth, Eugen would visit museums and study the Grecian ideal depicted in the statues. He spent his early years travelling Europe as a wrestler, living like a poor circus tumbler. However, his big break came in the UK in an elaborate competition to find the strongest man in the world around 1889. He was immediately offered a contract on the musical scene in London, where he would demonstrate incredible feats of strength, including bending iron bars, snapping chains, and supporting horses and soldiers on his back. The first bodybuilding show, staged in 1901 and billed The Great Show, was developed and promoted by Sandow himself. Following this contest, bodybuilding culture exploded, with entrepreneurs like Bernard McFadden selling chest expanders and starting the first bodybuilding magazine, Physical Culture. In January of 1904, the first bodybuilding competition in America took place in New York City. Al Trelode was voted the winner. Then, in 1910, a gymnast from Poland appeared called Bobby Pandor. It isn't entirely clear when he was born, but it was most likely between 1876 and 1882. After travelling around England and having little success with his gymnastic shows, he left for America in 1907. He began posing instead, flexing his muscles and receiving significant attention from the American press. But, during an on-stage performance in 1915, Pandor suffered an accident on stage which curtailed his bodybuilding career. Then in the 1920s, Charles Atlas came along, a prominent bodybuilder who popularised the idea of a physique standard to be set. He founded the World's Most Beautiful Man competition, which was then sponsored by the Physical Culture magazine. In 1940, the first properly modern bodybuilding show called The Mr. America was held. This was won by John Grimek. He would then go on to win the first ever Mr. Universe competition in 1948. He actually defeated the renowned Steve Reeves during this contest. However, after John Grimek faded out the picture, Steve Reeves would go on to have a flourishing bodybuilding career, winning the Mr. Universe title in 1950, as well as excelling in acting. Fifteen years later came the first Mr. Olympia competition. Larry Scott was crowned the winner after having won the Mr. America title in 1962 and the Mr. Universe title in 1964. Then... In 1969, the renowned Mr. Olympia was held, in which the world was first introduced to a 22-year-old from Austria, Arnold Schwarzenegger. At 6 foot 2 and 240 pounds, Arnold's physique was something that hadn't truly been seen before, and although he lost to Sergio Oliver, it was clear that he would be a force to be reckoned with. 
This prophecy came to fruition with Arnold winning the Mr. Olympia the year after. He would then proceed to win the next five Mr. Olympias in a row, and after taking a break from competing, he would then return to the stage in 1980 to claim his final title. In the 1980s, bodybuilding became dominated by Lee Haney, who ended up winning eight Mr. Olympia titles. Although bodybuilders in the late 60s and 70s, such as Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno, were taking anabolic steroids, they still, in my opinion, looked somewhat human and aesthetic. The post-Haney era saw a massive increase in the muscle mass of bodybuilding competitors. Dorian Yates and Kevin Lavrone have been very open with their steroid usage since retiring, admitting the pretty sizable doses of parabolin and anadrol that they were injecting. These massive doses explain why bodybuilders generally looked slightly freakish and unnatural in the period. Ronnie Coleman was the next Goliath of bodybuilding, winning eight straight Mr. Olympias in a row between 1998 and 2005. I mean, come on people, this sort of physique is not only ridiculous, but it ultimately requires an amount of anabolic steroids that will leave you crippled in the future. Between 2011 and 2017, Phil Heath would win the Mr. Olympia seven times, standing around 5'9 and weighing 240 pounds. The recent requirement for obscene amounts of mass in order to win the title has led to the description of competitors as mass monsters. Big Ramy's success in the 2021 Mr. Olympia fully underlines the need for abundant mass to win and retain the title. I do gauge the general reaction of the public as viewing the current state of bodybuilding as somewhat ridiculous. Many people prefer to follow bodybuilders like Chris Bumstead, who competes in the Mr. Olympia classic physique. The overall sense of agreement with the concept of bodybuilding being tainted is perhaps shown by the abundant YouTube videos covering recent examples of bodybuilders taking it too far. These have received millions of views. Ultimately, I feel the takeaway from this video should be that, at the current moment, if you want to reach the summit of the sport of bodybuilding, you have to sacrifice your long-term health, which to me doesn't seem sane or fair. Anyways, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the topic. Should we return to a time when the leaner athletic physique was hailed as the symbol of aesthetics or continue down the mass monster path?